All right, we were in 6.4 last time. We're taking a look at something called proportional reasoning. Um, and we have just a little bit left to go. So I believe we're on example seven. Does that sound right? Okay. Very little bit left to go. Okay. So example seven talks about where Mary, um, and so this is one of those kind of type C questions from your book, those communications or whatever they're calling them kind of questions. Um, and so Mary's working with measurements, and she writes up the following proportion. 12 inches over one foot equals five feet over 60 inches. How would you help her? So it's, it's a good idea when they ask questions like this to make sure that we're talking about what she's done right and what she's done wrong, if both exist, right? That's a good thing to do. Um, so somebody tell me something that she did right. She wrote, she wrote units on it. That's a good thing. Yep. And it's helpful, right? Good. What's something else that she's done that's right? Yeah. And I think that because we have the units written, we can see that pretty quickly, that each of these individual ratios are correct. Correct? Yeah. So one foot really is 12 inches. Okay, so let's jot that down first. So she's included units. And her ratios are correct. What's something that she's done incorrectly? Yeah. It doesn't look like there's anything to solve for. And there's no X or anything. Okay, so, but maybe she's not solving something. Oh. So that's possible, yeah. Uh, the units don't match up. Okay. So the units across the top versus the units across the bottom don't seem to be matching up. You see this? So what is it that we would do to help her? I'm writing that down first. So the units across the numerator um, and I'm going to put in parentheses and denominator. aren't matching up. So how would we help her to sort of fix that or adjust that? Okay, if we cross multiplied, it wouldn't work. That's true. So if I multiplied uh, the 12 times, that's not a good color for the screen. Uh, let's use red. The 12 times the 60, it's not going to equal the 5 times the 1. So that's going to be a good justification of why it matters, not just that they don't line up. Well, okay, but why does it matter? So that's good. Let's drop that one down. So I think that's good enough for us to justify that there's a problem. How do we fix it? What do we need to fix to actually make this a proportion for it to be correct? She can either split one of the fractions or she can put like the same units in the same fraction. Okay, so she could write can you give me, do the flipping one for me first, Kate, and then we'll do the other one. Do like 12 inches over one foot equals 60 inches over five feet. Okay, so she could flip the second fraction upside down. Would this work? Is this a proportion that checks out with the cross multiplication, like Gracie said? Yep. I don't know why I said 5T. How about 5FT? Let's get the F in there, 5FT. Okay, or what was the other thought that you had, Kate? Um, you could put like the same units in the same fraction. Okay, can you show me? Like what so like, you would make it say? It could be like five feet over one feet and 60 inches over 12 inches. 
Okay, so I agree that one would work. And the reason I wanted you to say it specifically, Kate, is because we could still set this up with the feet on one side and the inch on the other side and still mess it up. Um, so the order in which we put them in is still going to have some kind of a bearing on what's going on. Now, there's other ways that we could do things, right? We could have just flipped the first fraction upside down, right? Or we could have put um, the smaller amount of feet on top instead of the larger amount of feet on top like that. Those are other things we could do, but these are two examples of ones that would work to be able to show her. And you can justify that both of them do work by cross-multiplying, right? They're the quantities are equivalent to one another. Good. All right, example eight. Amy's friend told her that the ratio of boys to girls in her classroom was five to six. Amy was surprised that her class would have only 11 students. What would you tell her? Let's start with, where is she getting 11 students? Yeah, she's adding the five and the six. Um, so the way that this is set up, it's boys to girls. So we're looking at five boys and six girls, uh, the way that the ratio is set up. So if we added the five and the six, we'd get 11. Okay, so first, could there be 11 students? It's possible, right? Some schools are smaller than others, right? We could just have a very unusually sized class that came in. They could have taken on an additional teacher to try to relieve some of the stress in the other classes and redone the class um, counts, and this is what worked out. Okay, so it's possible that there's 11. Does there have to be 11 based on this information? No. So I think it's probably first good to note to notice there could be 11. But that 5 to 6 is a ratio, right? Actually, let me write it as a fraction on this one. And ratios could have come from reducing right, the final form of them. So what could this 5 over 6 be instead? if we were actually looking at the number of children instead of the ratio only. Okay, so five over six could be 10 over 12. Then it's just been reduced, right? What else could it be? 15 over 18. So Faith, can you tell us how you're getting those fractions? What are you doing? By? Okay, so she's multiplied the original fraction by two to get the second one, and she's multiplied it by blue three if she wants the third one. And could she multiply by four and five? Yeah, we could keep this process up. We're gonna create equivalent fractions. So because these ratios are all equivalent, there could be how many students? 22, 33, kind of numbers are we getting by doing this for multiples of 11 yeah so it's probably not bigger than 33 heaven forbid <laughs> would be whew, start to look like you're out of college at a state school or something right yeah not good um but yeah 22 is probably our most reasonable number for normal class you know a typical class size uh, but you could end up with 11 um you could end up with 33 and they put a para in your room right that happens it's a, it's a ratio which means that your child that comes into your classroom or your teacher that comes into your classroom to be with you could keep those numbers low enough that that's acceptable from the school standards. It does happen sometimes too. So those are all possibilities. Um, so these two things could happen and the ratios, okay, I'm getting a little too close up here, just a sec. The ratios still be, oh, I'm still too low or too high, five to six, we'll write that way. All right, it's still possible. So we could change the numbers, it could be 22 or 33. We could still have ratios that work with this and that could be the number of students. So the big misconception here is that she's counting the ratio like they're individual people and they wouldn't have to be for it to still be the ratio, right? Good deal.